Hello, hello, hello. How are you all doing? Uh, this is the Rug Detectives here. So basically another episode. And today what we're going to do, we're going to slightly change things up a little bit. What we're going to aim to do is do a, a, a run through of what's happening in the markets from a fundamental aspect, from a technical aspect. And then we'll break down and take a look at some, um, take a look at some potential projects um, in terms of going through the, the, the Rug Detectives checklist. And then um, thereafter, um, we'll just go over some Q&As and, and stuff to really help you uh, in this term. So anyway, Happy New Year to everyone, 2021. Um, hope it's going to be a flourishing, prosperous new year for everyone. Uh, good health and prosperity. So let's get straight to it. Uh, basically, first and foremost, before you do that, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, comment. Um, obviously, we're starting to add more videos as possible. So we're starting to get some, some nice comments taking place. And... Um, uh, number one, first and foremost, I want us to take a look at where we are in terms of the market today. So obviously, as we can see, this is on a daily time frame of Bitcoin. We are currently at all times highs just below the 30,000 range. It's interesting now, if you look at a weekly time frame, we are in a situation whereby um, there are no, no, downward trend lines there are no real target prices in place because obviously we broke through that which took place uh, on the 7th of December so moving forward there's been a huge amount of momentum huge amount of demand and this will always continue to occur but it just feels that if you take a look from the, the, the RSI level if you take a look at the RSI 14 stochastic indicator the price is currently overbought so we should see um, some form of a a, a kind of like an exhaustion uh, price to be able to slow down slightly people might start taking some profits off the table that we might move back and test if I just put a trend line here a horizontal line here we might get a move back that could potentially test around the 20 um, 19 20 thousand this is the previous high um, before we get a continuation this is a generally be a worst case scenario if not what we might do the price might continue to move according to the upward trend line just take this here so this is just a little mini trend line I've just taken here uh, upward trend line so again it, it just seems that the upward trend line and also the horizontal trend line the previous high is testing around this 20,000 so I do actually see some form of a, a rebound, a test, whether this is going to happen within the next month or so, um, and then a slight accumulation period where it kind of like just moves uh, within a range, and this this could be a, a 10 to 20 percent range before and move higher. So uh, this is what we're looking at. But right now, there's just huge, um, huge amount of let's say buying pressure. So this will continue until we start to get some forms of exhaustion that will take place. But anyway, this is the short term targets. Price can continue to move to about maybe 35, 40, but we should see a test. And, and, and sometimes if you take a look at the market, there has to be some form of a rebound, a test for the market to move higher. Yes. So these are certain levels that we should be looking at in price. Um, then let's take a look at the ETH. So Ethereum is also making highs, but not really the all time highs. So if we just go on to a daily time frame, see where we are. So the previous all time high was around the 1400 levels, we're about 733, so still 50% off that at the moment. Um, the next real, um, let's say, target point would be around here which is which is literally around 855 level so we're still good 100 and you know 20 dollars away from this point also let's just bring this down slightly um, so yeah we're still about 120 dollars away from this price but what's interesting with the eth is that it's it's moving and it's testing back to um, the moving average so moving average 50 that I have in place it was a nice bounce off here which took, took place on 24th of December day before Christmas uh, and then for a move higher tested 543 
and then the $200 move in the space of a couple of weeks. So we should see a potential test of this 837 resistance. Um, and then what we can also do is we can put an upward trend line in place here. The trend lines here on the ETH um, is less steep than it is on the BTC. So what we actually could see is a potential test of those highs and then a retracement back to here. Or we're looking at maybe a slight exhaustion and move to here, accumulation period, and then a move higher. Um, so these are things to look at on the ETH price. So now let's just take a look at some, some news. BTC news. So, well, this is pretty big here. They're saying governments will actually start holding BTC in 2021. So that's huge. You know, if you get governments that are really getting on board, it just tells you that this price will move higher. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be immediately, but there's a huge support. And if you're getting government backing BTC, then it only tells you that long term the only way is up. Then we're getting uh, BTC ETFs could finally become a reality in 2021. So there's been a lot of speculation. Um, over the last few years regarding ETFs, it's been debunked um, because obviously we had a hawk uh, in terms of one, someone in the uh, SEC chairman, he's now obviously left. So as you can see here, um, Jay Clayton, yep, who opposed the launch of BTC, he actually left, so his tenure's over. Um, and now uh, you can see that there might be some more interesting pr proposals that will be going through that were rejected previously uh, could be pushed forward. So it seems it's going to be an interesting time um, for what we uh, for BTC. Don't know why this deleted, but anyway. So that's where we are in regarding ETH. Let's just take a look at ETH news. See where we are in this. Um, got a day got some some news here let's just see what they're saying got some predictions from from coindesk from andrew keys uh, eth post 450 percent gain in 2020 uh, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride as you can clearly see from the dump that took place due to this whole covid situation when it really crashed down to about what was it the lows were around the 99 level so really moved like 7x uh, from those specific lows so and that's the situation there now they're saying that ETH, ethereum wells are looking to go through a buying spree uh, anticipation of all-time highs I, I think this all-time high situation can actually occur this year um, it just needs to double in price i think before the second quarter we should be able to test that but i think there'll be a movement lower first to test the trend line as i mentioned on a daily time frame uh, before we see that real move to take take out those highs of the year so that's that um, so now basically i want to actually just take a look i received um, from peter griffin in terms of um, he basically says can you do a rug detective on wise token he also mentioned launching in one day. This is a few days ago, so obviously launched already. He also said to do look at lead wallet RSR. So, um, and then I basically responded, just just said that obviously we are releasing a rug detective audit checklist, um, just going through the process of what you need as a trader, as an investor to follow, to go through um, before you decide to make decisions. Number one on exchange, so crypto exchange. Also number two in terms of the uh, the projects you're interested in DeFi projects crypto projects doesn't matter whatever this will just help you to be able to make decisions rather than just jumping in head first uh, just based on greed yes so he basically said rso is the reserve org so what we're going to do we're going to have a quick uh, partial audit of um, rsr for you peter you're welcome <laughs> and also for the rest of the community again do not be afraid make sure you click subscribe and follow and make comments as well we're going to really grow this uh, specific uh, channel taking a bit of a um, a way where we're giving information about what's happening in the space from the from the technical aspect from the fundamental aspect but also looking to ensure that if you're looking at certain projects that are let's say uh, micro caps that you're doing your due diligence so we're helping you along that whole process 
So let's take a look at Reserve RSR. So this is their website. Um, what is this? It's Reserve is a flexible pool of stable coins designed to reduce risk through diversification and decentralized governance. So uh, Reserve is just an app for buying, holding and spending digital. Okay, so it's like an app that's used to buy, hold and spend digital dollars. And then you've got a video. We'll go through this later. So protect your money, send um, and accept payments. There's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of companies that are trying to focus on stablecoin but they have an app for it so um, which is good so obviously you've got a video here we can go this through this information um, but what I'm gonna obviously do is pull up the the rug detective checklist that I've been really building and working over the last few weeks and, and this is I'm gonna provide this uh, to everyone for free and I'm gonna provide a link they can go through it to so really gonna look at adding more in-depth data so there's going to be a, a, a rug detective checklist um, which will be more basic and there's also going to be an advanced one so first thing that I'll be looking at is the website so we're going through now uh, take a look at the website are the um, individuals the team members uh, anonymous or are they non-anonymous I need to confirm take a look at the information of the company look at their LinkedIn profiles um, so first and foremost you can clearly see here with a lot of projects we look at now is a lot of the companies, a lot of the team members are anonymous, but here you can clearly see they're readily available. Um, so it just gives you more information so we can go into depth about them. It says that they uh, never oversee strategy, legal and team coordination at reserve. Um, then you've got the co-founder, Matt, gives you about his previous engineer for Google. So it's a lot of extensive experience um, that they have so it's always good to see when you have a company that's not hiding um, and they're willing to show their faces um, especially companies because it kind of builds that kind of trust aspect as well then you've got so that's more or less uh, you know I'll go through this in depth afterwards but this is obviously positive you've got investors here so you've got Sam Altman, so he's obviously well-known Y Combinator president. You've got Peter Till from PayPal and Palantir founders. So you've got some strong players in this space here that's backing this specific project. So it kind of gives you this confidence and it gives you more about all of these. So, you know, Arrington from Tech TechCrunch, XR, XRP Capital, Digital Group, Rocket. So well-known individuals, Ben Bush, um, guy from CNBC so you've got well-known entities that are really supporting this so that really kind of provides the, sh the trust <coughs> that you require in the space um, then you need to un understand about the background of the project what they're trying to achieve so if I take a look at here um, that's fine you know you can go through the registration process so here it says, you know, look at the company about when was the, the domain name actually set up, the website, whether it's a, it's a WordPress, whether it's a Wix. So if I go to like a Who's Lookup, for example, and if I go to this, these are just some, I'm just running you through some of the checks we'll actually go through to take a look at more information. So let's just go to another link, a better link if we can. Okay, I think this one's better. So this is like a who's lookup. So if you like what we're doing, do not be afraid to uh, to donate. We're obviously set up on Patreon as well, so you can be able to uh, donate on a monthly basis, or you can donate via ETH, via BTC. If you just take a look at the the information page from this uh, from YouTube. You can see all the information so we'll continue to support the community provide you as much information as possible so as you can see here this was actually created in 2000 so you know so you can see whether this was a reserve org i presume this was probably a domain name that was actually acquired by another company because i don't think this company has been working since 2000 um, on this project obviously not so I think because it's quite a strong domain name so it just shows some more validity here and this also helps in terms of SEO search engine optimization rankings because it has a high domain authority um, so that's one thing to look at which is positive rather than 
as I made from uh, yesterday's video of um, uh, Ditrexum, an exchange that was registered like nine days ago. Total, absolute scam. So anyway, so obviously we've gone through that. That's fine. Then obviously Telegram group. I actually added them on a Telegram group. So basically just to see they have 12,300 members. You don't know whether they're bots or not, but it's good to look at the flow of communication that's taking place and see what they're doing. So it shows that there's an AMA, live AMA, that basically took place a few days ago with the CEO of the company. And then just seeing the communication that, that's unfolding. So these are, again, going through the process of Discord, Reddit, take a look at this information. Then you need to know about products. So you have a lot of websites that are like very strong, um, amazing value prop, but they don't actually have um, they don't actually have a, a tangible product or they're saying that you know whether it's an MVP or whether it's in beta whether it's on on the test net on the mainnet this is what you really need to find out because what tends to happen is companies that launch that list on Uniswap that don't actually have a product that's ready to go um, what tends to happen is it the whole Europhia the whole demand fizzles out in the future so we need to really understand in terms of um, knowing more about whether they actually have a product on the main net. So it's just good to be able to read and just see um, to find out more. I actually saw previously that they actually don't have a product yet on the main net and it's about to come out. So if I was just going through this about designs, about stable coins. Okay, so roadmap goals continue to improve, enable transactions. Maybe if I even go onto their website to just see where they are in terms of their roadmap project current investors vision Let's see what they have in terms of the vision okay so story what's next even a bigger picture okay so it's not giving me this information so this is the type of due diligence and test you have to go through to really find out and understand whether this product um, but i did actually see before that the admin mentioned that they didn't have anything on the main net so this is, this is sometimes a slight concern, uh, long term, short term, you know, obviously it'll continue to do well, but long term, um, having a product on the main that is extremely important. Then you need to also take a look at the tokenomics. So let's look at protocol. So this gives you a breakdown of their protocol. Maybe the blog will give a breakdown of tokenomics or even under the telegram will give more information about this. Okay, let's just see here. Okay, uh, so this is something I would have to go through in my own time because it's just gonna take forever, but I'm just walking you through this whole process. I need to understand whether the product, there's no product, the product on testnet, is the MVP on the main net is a live product on the main net with existing clients. This is what you would like to see, kind of gives you that trust. Then obviously this part is listed already, so there's not a pre-sale that took place, but if it was a pre-sale, you need to know is it on bounce, is it on live protocol? Are they just accepting ETH via their own wallet? That's less trustworthy. Um, and then going through the whole process from that. And then you need to know about the audits, um, uh, the auditors, who actually audited the actual contract? Is it from Certi, is it from Chain Securities? So you take a look at the renowned en uh, entities. Then you need to take a look at the repositories. So take a look on GitHub, GitHub the code. Um, this is the smart and staking contracts if they have one to see if there are any vulnerabilities, any exploits. So if you then go to their specific, so this is on Dex tools that I'm using right now. Um, think this is the right am I right is this the right one so let's just see here I want to make sure this is actually the right contract 
I would definitely recommend them to actually have a pinned message of their smart contract and tokenomics and roadmap and their links to their website so that's something I would definitely recommend they add immediately because people don't want to be entering the wrong information here so basically what you do is that if you tend to go to so if you go to so you've got reserve reserve rights reserve.org so you don't know whether this is actually the right contract or not so anyway so when it basically comes up this could be a total scam you don't really know but so let's just see this so you've got reserve right you've got Anyway, so this is something I have to go through, but this is something I definitely recommend a team to solve straight away immediately because you're going to prevent a lot of people, a lot of issues. So then what I'll basically do is then go through the actual contract. So let's just say, for example, this was the company. It's a bit slow. Um, there's a function where you can be able to check on ether scan so I just wanted to walk you through what I would actually do when it's ready so let's say for example um, this is a contract then what I'll do is I'll click on view contract here to see more information uh, of reserve rights um, I need to obviously clarify whether this is the correct contract then I'll take a look at uh, the contract and then what I'll start doing is start auditing the code. So I'll go through the source code. So this is all the work we do at Rug Detectives to so start going through the source code, checking to see if there's any mining rights, um, transfer of ownership, trying to see if there's any um, potential exploits there that one can be able to print unlimited amount of tokens and increase the supply, any backdoor code. I also need to take a look if there's a proxy um, because then if there's a proxy and a smart contract behind that, you don't know whether um, there's potential vulnerabilities there. So all these things you'll go through with the source code to go through this information as it's stated here. Mint and exploits, anti-rug pulls, backdoor library, and so on and so forth. Then we'll take a look at GitHub. Um, and then also you then need to see if whether the liquidity is actually locked, so it has 2.8, you need to take a look at VIA, whether it's VIA Team Finance, whether it's VIA Unicrypt to see if it's locked. So, Okay, anyway, so a lot of information. I'll go through this audit and then I'll provide you with a breakdown of what my views are. Um, in the meantime, I hope you like this new structure. Um, if there are any areas that you feel that we need to work on to add, please let me know. Do uh, Please do not forget to like, subscribe, um, also follow us on Follow us on Rug Detectives and then also on Twitter. So we've got our obviously a Twitter account here. And do not be afraid to donate via our ETH. So if you be able to go down, you've got Patreon, you've also got ETH, you've got Bitcoin. So anyway, speak to you soon. Take care.